there is a crisis in reading. It is just one crisis, unfortunately, among many in education and the world at large. As educators and education professionals, we are impacted by the world we live in. We work with students while navigating structural injustices caused by poverty, housing ins insecurity, systemic racism, cultural and socioeconomic challenges, all while working within bureaucracies we have little control over. And it's only gotten worse since the pandemic. You all know this. There's a lot of uncertainty and fear. And educators, well, we're often on the front line of all of this. But you know what helps? Stories. The stories we tell about ourselves, the stories we share about others, the stories we talk about in class, and the stories that inspire students and educators. I know what it's like to submerge myself in stories, to breathe in the written wor word at every spare moment of my life. And I also know how lonely and frustrating it can feel to realize that my own experiences and stories are often overlooked, excluded, not given the same attention. This is one of the reasons why it took me a long time to admit I wanted to be a writer. My friends and family knew I loved to read, but I couldn't admit I wanted to do more that I wanted to actually write. Publishing is not an easy path, and I also had very few mentors and resources from within my own community. I decided the first thing to do was to actually finish something. Uh, <laughs> that's, the that's, the, that's the key step. So my first novel, I Shot Last, took me eight years. I was teaching full time uh, and I had two young children. Uh, plus I have a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, they see I'm South Asian, so I have a huge extended family in Toronto. Uh, they take a lot of time. I, <laughs> I worked on the book in, sh in short bursts, like when my kids were at swimming class or I dropped them off at like baseball. I, I was the, the parent in the stands with like a laptop balanced on their knees and being like, okay, okay, just five more minutes. Yeah, yeah, I saw your, I saw your pitch. You're great. <laughs> um, you know, or after they went to sleep. Uh, sometimes I would stop off at a coffee, coffee shop uh, for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, just on my way home from work, uh, just so I could get a little bit of writing done. And no one knew my goal except my husband. Uh, and the reason I, I didn't tell anyone, anyone is because I didn't want to hear, are you done with your book yet? <laughs> Which to a hopeful writer with imposter syndrome sounds like, have you given up on your silly dream yet? So one of the things that happened when I started writing uh, is, is that I was given an opportunity to write a column for the Toronto Star. It was a long running column. Um, I, but the way it started was, I think, kind of funny. I, I, I've been a lifelong reader of the Star. I used to read the Star when I was a kid. And even now, I still read it. Um, and I pitched this idea to the life section because I knew they would like it. And the idea was essentially how to talk to your kid about sex when, you're, when you come from kind of a, a culture where we don't really talk about things like that. And they loved it. So they bought the story and then I, wrote, I pitched them a few more columns and, and they, 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 uh, they bought those too and then they offered me a regular gig. Uh, we decided to call my new column Samosas and Maple Syrup, which is kind of funny. Uh, kind of cringy, but also kind of funny, uh, because I wrote about living at the intersection of being Canadian, South Asian, Muslim, right? not Muslim. Uh, and then when the star first approached me with the offer to write this regular column, I wasn't sure if I should do it. I didn't know if I, if I wanted to take the job, because I wanted to write fiction, not nonfiction. But I thought it would be good for me, uh, and I was convinced by some of the people around me. I thought it would be good to have regular deadlines, to force myself to write for an audience, to accept feedback from my editors. And I also really remember uh, the words of another famous writer, uh, sorry, a famous writer named Neil Gaiman. Uh, you guys know who Neil Gaiman is? Yeah, he had, uh, has had a lot of his shows produced and uh, is a science fiction and fantasy author. The writer Neil Gaiman, in a very famous valedictorian address from, oh God, maybe over 10 years ago for sure, uh, he makes the metaphor that building a career is kind of like climbing a mountain, and every step on the way you have to ask yourself, will this take me closer to the mountain, will this take me closer to the peak, or away? And I, I know that writing my column for the Star for seven and a half years made me into a writer. Uh, my advice to all of you, if you ever have an opportunity that will take you close to whatever career uh, mountain you aspire to, you should take it and don't look back. You never know what will come of the experience.